So I want to talk today about the new Steadicam arm post adapter. So basically you start with the Ronin quick plate that you might already have. You then purchase the arm post adapter which is that guy right there and you'll get in the package the following blocks and four bolts. So that boots is what you totally will need to do the Steadicam arm on the Ronin. So the arm post adapter is what you see there and then you will need the Ronin quick plate um, to make this work. So, um, oh and then it will also be a, a aircraft safety pin for the arm post. So the arm post will, that's something you have to have that comes from your Steadicam arm. We'll obviously offer this in different sizes so it'll fit with different uh, Steadicam brands and sizes. So basically I'm going to go through assembling this so you guys can see how it's done but it's pretty simple. Um, basically you take your running quick plate and then you take any one of the four, they're all identical put those over the uh, those holes right there and you stack it up like that and there's these through holes right here and that just falls in so you'll see the through hole that just falls in you you take your blocks and you slide them in right there like that So basically right there you have that, right? And then you take the second block and you slide that on. All right. Basically you'll end up with something that looks like that. And that's when you take your Ronin quick plate and you attach it to there, right? So let's do that. All right guys, so once you have assembled the Ronin quick plate with the Steadicam arm post adapter, you should have something that looks like this with the hole in the center. So you can tighten it until you see a little bit of a gap in between each of the plates. Okay, leave a gap so that the handlebars will slide nicely right through it. Okay. So now that the handlebars are in there, here's, here's the most important part. So you want to tighten these four screws evenly. So you want to have the same gap here as you have on the other side. And the other, you know, so center it on where you, where you want it on the post. And so that, that's the important part is to not apply too much pressure on one side. So what you're trying to do is you're trying not to crush the carbon fiber tube. So this is very important. Pay attention. Do not crush your tube or else you're going to have to buy another one. So, so tighten one a little bit. Take a look at the other side. See what the gap is like on the other side. Alright, try to get these gaps even. So you're applying even pressure across the tube. Okay, check it out. All right, this side is pretty tight. Let me go a little bit more. Okay. Now, the other thing is important to note is you do not need to go nuclear on these bolts. I mean, if you find that it's slipping, you can always tighten it, but just, you know, use your common sense. I mean, it's a carbon tube, guys. It's not aluminum, so you can easily crush it. We tried to make these as wide as possible to distribute the load across the carbon tube, but you know, this is just where you need to be careful and, and just be mindful of, the, of what you're working with. So once it's all tight, you're all set. And you just then at that point, grab your other, your other handlebar, uh, grip, tighten that, 
and then you have the complete system. All right, and then your, your arm post eventually is just gonna slide in there and then lock. All right, so now we're gonna get all set up on the Steadicam arm post. So if you have this mounted to a tripod or, some, or the handlebars, all you gotta do is slide this out. So you wanna undo the bolt, and you don't have to go too far. Just gotta release pressure off of it. Depress this safety, slide that off. And then same thing here. Slide it on the correct side. You should just be able to slide it on and immediately uh, uh, tighten the lockdown screw because if you're chatting with somebody and you turn away and you come back, you'll forget about that and you'll be sorry about it. But um, now that that's done, this is pretty much set up. I'll, you know, I'm constantly checking my balance, but it's okay for now. So what we'll do is I'll just end up having a assistant just hand me the uh, the Ronin and I'll slide it into my Steadicam arm post and you'll see what that looks like in a second. So I'm showing it to you here because it's easier uh, for me to film it that way but normally when then somebody is then sliding this into the, your Steadicam arm post you're just going to want to locate you just depress on the back here and it's going to fall in through and then if you want you can also tighten the pinch bolt though it's not entirely necessary because with the through pin there's no way this is coming off. So that's how that works. It's a very safe system. It's not a lot of weight, so it should be pretty safe. We got a pinch bolt and the, and the through pin. So here we go, Ronin quick plate with the Steadicam arm post adapter, the rigid version. And I uh, just wanna talk about a few things. So obviously right away, you can tell these are clamps. You can slide the handlebars left and right. You can rotate the uh, grips to clear the lens or clear the arm. You want to be aware of interference depending on the arm position. So, but you can always choose to go on one side or the other side of the arm and you still have full movement. Um, I just like to point out that this is way easier than an easy rig. First of all, you don't have any cable hanging over your head. You're not tethered, so you have full movement full floating stabilized movement of the Ronin. So it doesn't even compare to an easy rig. I mean, it's, first of all, you have way more control over it, you know, and you're not, you have zero effort, zero effort compared to wearing an easy rig that has a little bit of an uncomfortable vest. Steadicam vests are usually very comfortable and you can wear it for a long period of time. So yeah, with an easy rig, you can't really get overhead. With this, if I crouch, I can get low. You know, of course, we can go into low mode, and I'll go into that in a little bit. But here you go. So really, there's really one main uh, thing we need to talk about, the fact that it's a rigid system. So the advantages are the fact that I can let go of it, and nothing happens, right? I can let go of it for a second and then grab it, extend it out, do all sorts of things. In the full floating version, if I let go of it, it falls over. So that's an advantage and a disadvantage of each system. Now, where it makes a difference. So basically, in a Steadicam, your hips do a lot of the control. So with my hips, I can control a lot of the, literally the positioning of the object that's attached to it. So it's a direct effect of hips to arm post movement. So <clears throat> normally when you walk, your hips do a lot of swaying and stuff. And as you can tell, the Ronin does a lot of that stabilization, right? I can Samba and the Ronin stabilizes it. Now what happens is the Ronin doesn't stabilize vibration and that can sure happen on a Steadicam arm. And mainly that's happening because on a Steadicam you have a gimbal right here and it totally helps isolate your walking movement, one more po position where it does that. So if you just walk willy-nilly, as you can see, I mean, the Ronin's taking care of most of it, 
but some of it is that is going to translate into it. And you're not going to have such a great um, vertical movement. So you still want to have a little bit of the steady cam walk, what I like to call the ninja walk. So with the ninja walk, you're going to get good results. But if you just walk around, you know, it's not going to work so great. Now, the, f the full motion arm post will help with that quite a bit because it's going to act like a gimbal and isolate some of the side-to-side -side motion of the arm post that's being induced by your hips. But um, basically, that's just something you need to be aware of. Now, I like the fact that I can let go of it. I like the fact that it's, I can finesse it. Yeah, I can finesse it. You know, and that's because this is rigid. Now, if with the full floating, I'm going to always have to hold it. So that's just something to think about when you guys are choosing which one you're going to use. So, all right, guys. So here I am on the vest in low mode on the Ronin. And so big importance, make sure you got your safety pin through, pinch that down, tighten the, the collar down a lot. If you have a second through hole here, use that. Just be very safe um, because the camera could drop down if you forget any of those things. But basically, um, you just want to be aware of where the handlebar is, how big it is. You can slide it. You can offset it to the left if you want to. Um, you can move the handlebars like I just did. And, you know, it's very useful. You can get to about waist level. To, and if I crouch, I can touch the ground and I can come up and it provides a lot of a lot of freedom of movement and a lot of options for shooting. So once again, you know, the big thing with the vest mount, as I was talking about with the um, when it was in regular mode, is your hip movement translating into <coughs> into the image through the post. So that's something you want to be very aware of when you're walking. You can't just walk any way you want. It does not, doesn't work that way. With the, with the jointed, with the full floating arm post, it's going to help with a lot of that, but it's still something you should be aware of. You know, you have to do a steady cam walk. You know, steady cam walk. Ninja walk, as some people say. So, you want to have the arm adjusted really nice, but as you can see here, you have full range of movement in the low mode and um, works great on the vest. So one more note about running essentially because you can't do the ninja walk and run. So if you have the rigid arm post, running is definitely an issue and it's going to show up in your footage. So um, the, the full motion arm post is going to help with that, but uh, honestly on a full on run, maybe even just holding the Ronin might be better. Um, I would do it on the Segway. I think that would give me the best result. Um, and I can go for a long time. You can use an ATV, you can use a variety of vehicles, a golf cart. But um, yeah, so once again, the issue is when you run, you know, you're really, that arm post is really moving. You can see that, you know, so you can't, you know, we have a sort of ninja run that we do, you know, that would help. But really running is one of those ones with the rigid arm post is going to be a little bit of an issue. So it's just something to think about. Uh, and I'm not, it depends on what you guys are doing with this Steadicam arm. But um, so Roman Steadicam arm segue. Let it do its thing. And then with starts and stops, you can see the Ronin adjust a little bit. Even though I'm, I'm leaning quite a bit. On the Segway. All right, so I'm mounted up on the Segway here. And I want to talk about a few things. Right now we're in follow mode, as you can see. And... Um, First thing is the arm post height. So you're going to want to have a little bit of a long arm post on here so that um, you, can, you can play with the height because 
obviously you run into issues where you might hit your arm with the with the uh, handlebars. So you can slide the handlebars over. Um, I find it very useful. I like the handlebars on there because I can do things like, you know, I could do things like this and I can use it to maneuver around objects. Say there's somebody right there, I can go like that, you know. So the handlebars are very useful. The solid mount version is very useful. I can let go of it and it'll stay in place. And um, I can go, I can use it to go low. I can use it to go high. Um, very useful. So obviously one of the most important things um, when you're hard mounted, and it doesn't have to be a Segway, it can be any number of things. It can be um, uh, ATV, uh, the back of a pickup truck, whatever. You know, this hard mount, it's a Claussen mount, and you can adjust the angles on it. Because as you can see right now, it's running away from me. So that has to do with these adjustments. And it's harder to do when there's weight on the arm. But I can just take some of that out. And now it's just going, f you can see now that it's, it's going forward. So I'm just going to want to go up on this knob right here. That's what's nice about this Claussen hard mount. So now it's almost staying in place, right? So very little. So here's what's so great about this Steadicam arm post mount is that as, as the person holding it, I don't have to think about it too much. I can just whip this thing around, put it wherever they needed to put it, you know. So the only consideration is the handlebar interfering with your Steadicam arm. So my only note there is you can slide this over, you can buy your own, your own uh, handlebar and you could cut it down so that it's shorter. You don't have to use the, uh, the grips, you can just hold on to this. What you don't want to do is let go of it at all because it can, it can freak out on you. It's not doing it right now, but it can certainly do that. So you always want to have a hand on it. And so, but there's ways around it. So even though if right, right here, I would interfere with the arm, I can just go behind it. Or conversely, you know, I could just move the position of the arm and go on the other side of it as well and still be close to my body. So you can position the arm control. You, can, you have to sort of control where it's at, but you know, in most cases, you have a large range of movement without any interference. So, and this is with a full length handlebar. So you can cut this down and make life a lot easier for you. Um, I would definitely buy a second handlebar so that you have your own custom version for this, um, this mount and so that you don't have to disassemble your Ronin handlebar. So that's it basically in a nutshell. So, all right, guys. So, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the the Steadicam arm and the Ronin. So, basically, a couple of big points is that what's missing in this whole setup is the Steadicam gimbal, which takes care of this motion. So, as I, I explained on the vest, the socket block motion translates directly into the because this is a rigid mount. So. This is something you have to be aware of. You have to account for when you're operating it. As you'll see by my demo footage, I was able to get footage and not have that interfere. Um, now, as I explained, the full floating arm post that um, we're going to offer would essentially address a lot of those issues. And of course, would also give you pan and tilt and full motion, but then you would always have to hold on to the handlebars, which um, could be a disadvantage. So obviously with this one, I can let go of it and it's not a problem. So, you know, it, this is, this is a, it's a characteristic of not having a gimbal right here. So 
um, is something you have to watch out about. You know, acceleration and deceleration of the Segway is taken care of by this axis. You know, any sort of road uh, imperfection or, or grade in this axis will be taken care of by the Ronin. Uh, one thing that isn't is a vibration. Now, this, the arm, as you can see here on the sideways, it actually works like this as well. So it, it will, you see that, the camera is still stabilized. So, and the arm will take care of up and down motion, which is our fourth axis. So it does a lot, but depending on what kind of ground you're on, it's still gonna transmit vibration. The same way if, if you're wearing a vest and you just walk normally, um, the, your hips are gonna transmit your uh, hip movement into the image a little bit. So this is something you gotta be aware of. The, once again, the full motion version of the arm post would address that issue to a large extent and it's still not the same as a full-on Steadicam gimbal which would totally eliminate all that motion. There's a car right here, you can do this, or a person. You can go down and then you can go up. So you can see with the handlebars, why I wanted the handlebars on there. Because especially on the Segway, you can really like whip the runner around pretty good. <laughs> so talking about the handlebar, I definitely recommend getting a second handlebar. Um, it's good to have a spare in case it gets crushed or something. But most importantly, you can cut it down, you can customize it. Um, it's good to, so that you don't have to break down and to waste time switching over the handlebars. I definitely recommend getting a second uh, handlebar post from DJI. Um, but yeah, you can slide this over here to get it out of the way of something. You can slide just one grip out of the way if the camera is going to pan through the grip. So you can, you can alternate the position of these handlebars to get away from, you know, if this is hitting the arm or something, just twist it sideways and then now you don't have an issue. You know, so now I can spin 360. So, and if you're having issues with the handlebars touching the, the, the canisters or your arm, you just have to play with the positioning of that. You'll see I'm, I'm alternating the side of where the arm goes on the side of the handlebar. So, you know, it's not plug and play, you have to be a you have to know about the Steadicam arm, how it works. You have to know about Steadicam as far as like how to tune the arm, you know, so that it performs well, so that it does what it's supposed to do. But um, that's a nice little overview right there. So, um, low mode. Let's talk about low mode. So here's low mode. You could go down to the ground, do a little tracking shots and stuff, and boom up. And of course, I can adjust the socket block height. I can move this all the way to the top and get up here if I wanted to. But right now, I have it set for for ground floor mode. You see, I'm in follow mode, so I'm still controlling the camera a little bit. Yeah, I don't need a lot of pressure on it. It's good because you can finesse things. I, I have a question. Yeah. Since it's dark, are we on overtime? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, all right, guys. 
So here is low mode on the Segway. So basically what I did is I just inverted the arm post. I put the collar on the top so the arm doesn't drop through. Some steady cams will have an additional safety pin there. Um, I, I still have my safety pin here and I pinched this down so nothing would drop out. So now that we know we're safe, that's the basics. But I like having the handlebars on here so that I can, I can go very low and not have to crouch over. And, and it helps with my Segway operating as well. So you can do really nice smooth boom ups and boom downs and all that, you know. And so it's the same, same concerns as when you're in regular mode. Um, you have arm interference issues um, depending on where you are in the boom range. So you just have to be aware of that as the operator. Um, and as always, you can slide these around to make room. You can cut down the, the handlebar tube to make that easier. The only thing you want to watch out is letting go of the handlebar because not so much in follow mode, but there. See, you, you can get it to freak out on you. So anyways, just be mindful of the Steadicam arm and low mode is a fantastic and it works great. You can get some really beautiful shots, you car tires, you can do a lot of creative stuff with it. So there's low mode. Um, so the only thing to, I once again, f never forget with low mode is be very safe on all your attachments so that the camera doesn't drop off. So these, this is one of the things where you just can't do that with an easy rig. So anyways, um, I think I covered everything. Uh, please check out the website. Uh, follow us on Instagram or Facebook the Facebook page because that's the most instant way of when we got new products and whatnot so I recommend you following us and because uh, then you'll you'll be the first one to know when we got a new product we have a lot of things lined up um, a lot of great cool things lined up I hope everybody makes fantastic use of the steady steady cam arm post adapter and uh, I can't wait to see some of the fantastic footage that everyone gets um, I recorded some test, test footage that I'm sure you guys are all anxious to see and we'll play that right now and uh, thank you for supporting Cinemill. So you can, and if you crouch, you can go down, you can go up, around, I can even, with the handlebars, you know, creep into something and go like this. So I mean, really, you can get really creative.